in, everybody. Glad you're with us. We've got baseball coming up for Jackie Robinson Day. It's the Texas Rangers going up against the New York Mets. John Shelby alongside Chris Singleton. Chris, today a special day on the Major League Baseball calendar, Jackie Robinson Day. Everyone on the field wearing number 42 to honor Jackie and his breaking of the professional baseball color barrier in 1947 with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Well, Boog, it's a great day for everyone in terms of just the unity that it helped to bring forth within our country, and a lot of times that's done through sport. But for me, as a black player, player when I think about Jackie Robinson and I think about the connection of such a great player and all of the adversity that he had to endure baseball's hard enough just to play but then everything sort of on the field off the field and how he persevered through that so inspiring all right we'll be back to get this one started after this all right just about set to go and on the hill, a soft tossing lefty, just like you, Chris, Jose Quintana. What do you have on him, Chris? Try to stay back for that power changeup. Speed differential between the fastball and the changeup is huge. Hitters, they have a hard time staying back. All right, ready to go here. Here is Marcus Simeon. The second baseman, Marcus Simeon. And the pitch. And a foul ball. Kicks and fires. Swing and a foul over the screen and back out of play. The pitch. Ground ball left side. Slings it across and Simeon is out. And now we take a look at the Rangers lineup. Someone who makes things happen for them, in part with his legs, Ezekiel Duran. Yeah, he's been swinging it really well over the last few weeks, man. An OPS over 900 last month. He's put the team on his back, just carrying these guys. Definitely the guy you want up there right now, especially when you need a big swing of the bat. And here's Corey Seager to hit. Third ball drops in for a strike. You know, Corey Seager would have been named the American League MVP in 2023 if it wasn't for some guy named Shohei Otani. Stepped out, shining two-way player, but Seager did his best by putting together a full season with impressive numbers. Oh. And he handles it himself for the out. Two outs, bases empty. Adolis Garcia, the next to hit. Breaking ball through there for a strike. And a foul ball. Two out spaces empty. Chop to third. And he grabs it in foul ground. But foul. Here's the 0-2. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. And good work there as he gets a 1-2-3. Middle of the first, no score. to slab in this one Nathan Evaldi what should we keep an eye on here well this is a guy that usually turns in a very good outing people like playing behind him everyone seems to be loose and the offense tends to get going so you know you look at an opposing lineup when they see him out there in the mound they know that he's going to compete they don't want to let him settle in they want to try to knock him out get into that bullpen before he gets real comfortable here's Brandon Nimmo And the pitch. To the right side, Duran. He'll do it himself. And a quick out, number one. That Let's take a peek at the Mets lineup here. Chris, this is a lineup offensively that could be really good for years to come. Well, there's a lot of young talent in this lineup. I think as they gel together, gain some maturity over the course of this season, they could be playing October baseball. Here's Francisco Lindor.
right through there for a strike. For Lindor being drafted out of Montverde Academy, he's a guy that's turned into one of the best all-around players in the game. Here comes a pitch. Ground ball right side and foul ball. The wind of the pitch. In the air, right field. And it's caught for the out. Maybe caught that one off the end just a little bit. Couldn't quite barrel it up enough to really drive it. Here's Pete Alonso. Really bringing some thump at the plate lately. Three homers already in this series. Fastball for a strike. It's 0 1. 0 1's the count. And that drops in for a strike. Well, he didn't like those first two pitches down an 0 2 hole. He's going to have to battle, hope he gets a mistake. The 0 2. Swing and a miss, and he got him. And it's a three up, three down inning. And the Mets go down 1 2 3. Scoreless after one. Top of the second, now the left fielder, Evan Carter. As the lefty gets to work. Carter. Late on that fastball. Quintana, a 6 1 lefty. He features a sinker, a four seamer, a curve, a changeup, and occasionally mixes in the slur. Foul ball there. And a curve misses outside. Oh, and they're going to tag the pitcher with a pitch clock violation. That's an automatic ball. The pitcher must begin his motion before the pitch timer runs out. We're looking for a little more urgency out there. The 2 2 on the way. Keeps the at bat going with a foul ball. And a pitch. Spoils that one and it remains two and two. Well, he's having a tough time getting a pitch by him as a hitter. You feel pretty confident that you're seeing different pitches still able to make some type of contact. Stays alive. Also really good at bat. What I like about this guy, his bat stays in the zone for a long time. Gives him the ability to foul off tough pitches. Fights it off, he'll see another. Why to kick the pitch? The punch out there. He didn't make it easy for him on the mound, but they still get the strikeout. That left-handed batter facing a left-handed pitcher that's got some sink like that at the end. It's just the bottom falls out of it. When it looks like it's going to be a pretty good pitch in that location that everyone says lefties love. Josh Smith stepping in for the Rangers. That one's in there. That's strike one. Second inning here. No score. Right through there for a strike. Aside to home plate duty is Ricky Holiday. Boog, and something I've heard players saying about Ricky's strike zone is how he will call the high strike. That could be something that's tough to deal with, especially if you've got a pitcher out there coming at you with high velocity. What about an umpire's height? How much of a role does that play in your experience and what the strike zone is like? Yeah, I think it pushes the strike zone up a little bit, which, you know, as a former hitter, you like that. You wanted the ball up. You didn't want to have to deal with stuff down in the zone consistently. Travis. Jankowski. So digging in, Travis Jankowski. Outfield playing pretty shallow. 
as the game has moved along, we see more and more information supplied by teams about the umpires. I've been in clubhouses where they have pictures of all four umpires, nicknames, hometowns, and as well, hobbies listed, just so you can kind of small talk the umpire a little bit. <laughs> That's great. Next offering is in for a strike. That's through there for a strike. Love how vocal the umpire is today. No doubt in the hitter's mind, catcher's mind, and even the pitcher's mind as to the conviction in the call. Ground ball to the right side. Oh. Alonso takes it to the bag, and it's a 1-2-3 inning. Rangers go down quickly there. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Back here in Queens, bottom of the Welcome inning. Back. And now Just Jeff McNeil. Evaldi back to work. There's a strike, 95 of that one. Righty to the plate. Hit on the ground to the right side. Duran steps on the bag, one up, one down. Matting fit. The catcher. From Chicago. Here's the catcher to hit, Francisco Alvarez. Outfield playing very deep, not wanting anything over their heads. And a foul ball. And the 0-1. That one hooked foul. One out, base is empty. Line to left. Dives, but it's off his glove. Base hit. That is good. The light looked around that pitch on the outside, but he was still able to square it up pretty nicely. And that takes quick, strong wrist to pull that off. Starling Marte up to hit. And the pitch a little bit low, ball one. And the 1-0. And ball, that's outside. That's Last two pitches have been down in the zone. Pitcher clearly trying to get that ground ball double play. But in this count, he's going to have to give in, elevate his pitches, and get back into this at bat. On the ground, Smith over to second for one, and that's two. One hit in the inning, but no one left. We played two full. We're tied, nothing, nothing. And welcome back to the ballpark. And here's the catcher, Jonah Hine. Hi. Quintana back to work. And that's Ooh, outside. That's and that's ball one. And a pitch. That one fouled off. The pitch. Foul ball still a one and two count. And here it comes. Hard grounder into the outfield for a knock. Man aboard on the leadoff single. He was all over that one. I really like that swing, man. He didn't just push it the other way through the infield. He drove it that way, and it kind of makes me think he was thinking opposite field as he stepped into the box, got a pitch he liked, and he got it done. 
Swing and a bouncer. There's one. Here's Leody Tavares. He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. This one popped up. Lindor drifts towards it, puts it away for the out. And there are two down. The batter, the second baseman, Marcus Simeon. Now it's Marcus Simeon. First time up, he grounded to third. That one's in there. 0 and 1. He's a bad ball hitter, so even if you get him to chase pitches outside the zone, he still might beat you. Not an easy out by any means. The pitch. Gets a piece, and it stays 0 and 2. At the belt and fires. Foul ball, it stays nothing and 2. Gets a piece, and it stays alive. Struck him out looking. So they can't do anything with the leadoff single there. We move on to the bottom of inning number three. No score. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. And stepping in for New York, Tyrone Taylor. As he turns on the rubber, and with that good live arm delivers. On the ground, out to short. Not in time. Great effort, but it's an infield hit. Well, that's one of those where you just have to tip your cap because he couldn't have played that one any better. Stood no chance with the speed running down the line. And next for the Mets, Brett Beatty. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. Two strikes may see some movement over there at first base, trying to stay out of the double play right here. And that one lifted in the air, center field. Tavares settles under it, makes the grab, and there's one away. Batting nut, the center fielder, Harris. Bader. And now Bader up to the plate. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond, and this guy is at the top of the list. And you play behind guys, and they love having your speed out there defensively. One of the things that we talk about is how much pitchers enjoy having those elite defenders behind them. Fought off foul. Boogan, the one thing about that is speed never goes in a slump, and defense shouldn't either. Hitting-wise, you can struggle. You can lose your mechanics. Smith on to Simeon. He's out. And they bounce into two already. This one ends the third. No runs, one hit, no errors, and no one left. Three innings complete. We're tied. Nothing, nothing. Thank you softly because you like the gas tank up. And Mr. Softy's in the wind and ain't feeling you. See, every time you see me, I got something new. Back here at City Field, John Chompy with Chris Singleton and set to lead Corey. off the fourth, Corey Seager. The wind and the pitch. Popped up to the left, into foul ground. Alvarez settles under it and makes the catch. And there's one down. Now batting the right fielder, 
Here's Adoles. a big power threat. Adolis Garcia. Garcia. Scoreless here, but now he's got to deal with a guy who's got some power. Got to be careful when you're talking about a hitter with this type of slug and these type of home run totals. Swing and a tapper that rolls foul. You'll one. On the ground to the left, Baden. Zips it across. Oh. Two up, two down. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the okay. air. Let's the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Evan Good execution. Carter. And next will be the cleanup hitter, Evan Carter. His first at bat was a strikeout. And that one is in for a strike. Fourth inning underway, no score. That one, one ball, way one inside. Strike. Swing and a pop up. Foul and a play off to the right side. That'll find the stands. Here's a one two. And they'll do it again. You can see he was trying to stay back long enough to handle the off speed pitch, but just a little tardy on the fastball. <laughs> and that's in the dirt. Now well, he's desperately looking for that swing and miss. He's going to have to just change speeds a little bit, try to move it around, create just a little bit of illusion at the end. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Rangers go down in order. Nothing doing for the Rangers, and we're still knotted at zero. And we're back. Here's the left fielder, Brandon Nimmo. The left fielder, Brandon. The right hander back to work. Line drive, and that's a base hit. So a man on base to start the inning. Waste no time there. Kind of a risky pitch coming inside with the breaking ball like that. You have to bury it. Otherwise, it's not too difficult to get the bat to it like he did that time. And now it's Frankie Lindor. He's 0 for 1. That one is absolutely belted. And that should be extra bases. Throw comes in. Runner stops. Second and third. Nobody out. And he's got a double. Now it's the polar bear, Pete Alonzo. Golden opportunity right here. Hard hit, left side. In plenty of time to first. That's out number one. And a run comes in to score. Jeff McNeil stands in. Grounded out his first time up. Listen, there's absolutely no reason to pitch to this guy right here. You nibble, you see if he'll expand his zone, but don't give him anything to hit. If you walk him, not a big deal. You have a double play opportunity set up. On the ground. Simeon, toss over to first. Two away. Now batting, catcher, Francisco. And now the catcher comes up to him, Francisco Alvarez. And he's already singled in this game. Bounce to third. Slings to first, and that'll keep more runs from coming in, inning over. They get a run on two hits, no errors, and a man left. We're headed to the fifth. It's the Mets one, and the Rangers nothing. Great to have you with us here on Jackie Robinson Day. Here's the third baseman, Josh Smith, and the pitch. And that's in for a strike. 
You know, Singy, when you think about every player wearing number 42 on Jackie Robinson Day, you can thank Ken Griffey Jr. for all of it. Griffey was the first player to come up with the idea of wearing number 42 back on April 15th in 1997, the 50th anniversary of Robinson's Major League debut. Foul ball still 0-2. That was also the day that Bud Selig retired his number. And Griffey, who was playing for the Mariners at the time, asked to have his uniform number flip-flop, switching from 24 to 42. Swing and a miss struck him out. Really love the pitch sequence right there. I'm telling you what, pitcher and catcher on the same page right now. So next to hit for Texas, Travis Jankowski. This one chopped on the ground, but foul. One down, base is empty. The offense needs to start showing some fight against this starter. He's doing his thing out there. They're going to have to push back at some point and make him work a little bit harder. Next offering is in for a strike. The Mets up by a run. And we're at the top of the fifth. He goes down looking. Wow, that's a tough call for the hitter, but the pitcher will take that all day long. Not quite in the strike zone, but he found a spot that the umpire is going to, at least for now, allow him to get that call. So hitters are going to have to make an adjustment, but pitchers are going to learn from those things and really try to exploit them if they can. And here is Jonah Heim. And it's fouled away. Two down, nobody on. Eight, two. Now this offense has just been locked down. Almost five full innings of shutout baseball. Got him. And a nice inning of work there as he sets him down. One, two, three. Rangers go down quickly there. They're down one nothing. We head to the bottom of the fifth. And stepping in for New York, Starling Marte. The pitch. Out to center. And that will fall. So a runner aboard to start the inning. Hitting is really easy for some guys. One thing that I can see already, his bat stays in the zone on plane for an extended period of time. And guys like that, they have a high contact rate and they have more barrels because of that bat being on plane. And even when you don't get it great, it's still hit hard enough to dunk something in like that in front of the center fielder. Now here is Tyrone Taylor. Hey. Right through there for a strike. Taylor oh in his fourth year, a career batting average over 300, and he was a second round pick back in 2012. Deal two. Bounced up the middle. Oh, great stop. On to Simeon. Back to first, and that is a double play. Now the third baseman, Brett Beatty. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Two outs. And that catches the low inside corner. Good fastball. Swing and a foul over the screen and back out of play. Two down, nobody on. Last half of inning number five. Eight. Got him looking. And that'll do it. Back 
here in Queens. All set for the start of the inning. And now the first baseman, Ezekiel Duran. It's interesting he plays kind of a, a power spot defensively, but runs pretty well. So when you're looking at that position, you're not expecting someone that has maybe above average speed, but he does. Quintana back to work. And he takes a strike. And I think that skill set really upgrades the position because when you have that kind of speed, it makes the whole team that much better. Swinging on the curveball. Looks like he's picked up right where he left off. Well, right now he's in cruise control, autopilot, just dominating these hitters. It doesn't look like it's a fun at bat. And all of a sudden, you become in awe of this guy on the mound. Somebody's got to break this thing up. That's five straight strikeouts. Got to put a ball in play. Leody Tavares will hit next. Little chopper rolls foul. The Mets leading by a run, and we're the top half of the sixth. And a swing and a miss, and there's two away. Well, he's been racking up the strikeouts, and what's so impressive, not walking anyone. I mean, this guy's just going right after hitters, filling up the strike zone, and it looks like hitters, they're trying to think with him, but they just are a pitch behind. Dominating stuff out there on the mound. And now, Marcus Simeon. That's towards center. Bader makes the catch, and that'll do it. So another good inning for him on the mound. Six shutout innings now. It's the Mets one, and the Rangers nothing. And welcome back to the ballpark. Bottom of the six, and stepping in for New York, Harrison Bader. Bader. The pitch. On the ground to third. Gathers oh. and throws to first. And that's one out as they get the leadoff hitter in the sixth. Now batting, left fielder, Brandon. Brandon Nimmo, Nimmo up now for the Mets. One for two. And first offering is fouled off. Love it here at City Field. You know, it replaced Old Shea Stadium back in 2009, and Chipper Jones was really sad to see it go. It's actually the third home of the Mets since they started out at the Polo Grounds for two seasons before Shea was finished. This to center field. Tavares moving under this one. Hauls it in for the out. Now the shortstop. Francisco. Two outs, bases empty. And now here is Francisco Lindor. <laughs> to the right side. He takes it himself oh. to the bag, and that'll do it. No runs, no hits, no errors. Seventh inning coming up. It's the Mets one, and the Rangers nothing. Top of inning number seven. So now it's Corey Seager. Corey Seager. The wind of the pitch. Right side, hard hit. Jump throw across his body. Nicely done for the out. Garcia. 
Adolis Garcia stepping in for the Rangers. Swing and a foul back. That's out of play. Holding on to a one run lead here in the top half of inning number seven. Looking to get the tying run on base. Out to short. Throws to first. And two away to start the seventh. Up next for the Rangers, the left fielder, Evan. Next Carter. to bat will be the Texas cleanup hitter, Evan Carter, who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. And there's a foul ball. Trying to keep good speed off the bases. When a guy's throwing a lot of first pitch strikes as a hitter, you've got to be ready to hit. Now, that's not going to help you get deep into his pitch count and into the bullpen, but you've got to take what he's offering that day. Swing and a ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. So the tying run reaches with two away. Up next for the Rangers. Only two the hits allowed game. so far tonight, Gould, yeah. so I don't think that one will disrupt his momentum all that much. You know, he's really been on top of his game, commanding his pitches all night long. Two outs, runner at first. Josh Smith now at the plate. Swing at a high fly ball left field. Makes the catch in and over. Rangers leave one. They still trail one nothing. Here at City Field, leading off, Pete Alonso. Here comes a pitch. And takes low for ball one. Here's a swing and a drive left field, and he knew it. A gigantic blast. That's his fourth home run of the series, and they add to their lead. It's 2-0. There's a big grin on his face right now, Boo. He's probably had some of those that didn't stay fair, but off the bat, it looked like it was going to bend foul. Was able to keep it in there, tucked it nicely, and he gets the jog around the bases. Good for him. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. That'll be it for Nathan Evaldi. We'll be back in a minute with a new arm on the mound. Grant Anderson will take over here. Just trying to keep this one close here, and this is where a bullpen can give their players a chance to fight back into the game. And now here's Jeff McNeil. And he hits a ground ball right side. Duran oh. takes it himself and one away in the bottom of the seventh. The catcher. Francisco. Here's the catcher for the. Francisco Alvarez. Out in front with the swing, and that is strike Hold one. On, Bullpen action for the Rangers. Dane Dunning appears to be getting ready for Bruce Bochy. Pruitt getting loose as well. Right-hander kicks deals. Hey. Swing and a miss. And it's 0 2. Two pretty nasty sliders to get this hitter in an 0 2 count. 
you're up there at the plate, you got to look up in the zone. And now this ball is well hit. This one's got a chance. Pulls it in on the warning track. Hey man, four pitches, two outs. That is an excellent pace. Now right fielder. Here's Starling Marte. So I ain't saving you a clean house. Do you think that's just a statement? And first offering is fouled off. One run across in the frame so far. Here the bottom of the seventh. The pitch. He swings and hits a fly ball. Center field. Tavares under it. Squeezes it. And the inning is over. The Pete Alonzo blast for the Mets. It's now a 2-0 ball game. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. I can't understand why they all on me. I'm crazy. Don't get involved with me. I dropped the top and feel this autumn breeze. You need gas till we can be all on E. And we're back. New inning Rangers. getting started. Now here's the Rangers DH, Travis Jankowski. And a pitch. And a foul ball. Left hand hitter waits. In for a strike. Oh, a two now. Quintana into his eighth inning of work singing. He's been good. Yeah, he's the type of guy that gets better as he gets deeper into the ball game. If you're going to get to him, you get to him early. They didn't do that today. We'll see what happens as this finishes. Probably made pretty quick work of him right there. You look at the sequence, everything down at the knees and below. And some guys are good low ball hitters, but right there, they clearly had a plan to pound that part of the zone, and he wasn't able to put up much of a fight. Jonah Heim stepping. in for the Rangers swing and a ball popped up under it snags it for the second out that was a good pitch to hit right down the heart of the plate had pretty good timing on it just got underneath it a little bit and popped it up Duran digging in Ezekiel Duran struck out on just three pitches last time And a big swing and a miss. Oh, and one. Oh, and two now as he swings through it. Well, as good as things can be, it can be a tough day at the office, even for the skippers. Seeing the offense just sputter, not able to get anything going. Out to short. The throw to first, it. and it's a 1-2-3 inning. Totally dominant on the mound as he's through eight without surrendering a run. It's the Mets two, and the Rangers nothing. Back now, new pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth, Dane Dunning. He's making his fourth appearance of the season. So now the DH spot, Tyrone Taylor. And a pitch. And that's off the inside edge. On and oh. And that one is lifted in the air. And it stays fair. So up next, Brett Beatty. On the ground a second, might be two. Over to Seeger. Oh. Throw to first, Thanks, save. Harrison Bader up now for the Mets. Harrison Bader. Out of line, out towards center. Base hit. 
They get it in quickly. So first and second now, one out. Oh, that started and ended pretty quickly. No messing around right there. Just a very nice approach and swing right there to use the big part of the field. Everything was on time. He stayed balanced through the entire swing and just launched that one into center. Stepping in, Brandon Nimmo. Drilled to right, way back there, and that is gone. That'll fire up the dugout. It's five zip. He only needed one swing to square it up. Not wasting any time in that at bat, Boog. Aggressive, and it paid off. Side can be a bad breaker. You have to catch it out front to get the barrel to it. Does a really good job recognizing it early, getting the bat head to it, and hitting it out of the ballpark. So out of the pen comes the right-hander, Austin Pruitt. He's making his second appearance of the season. Now up to hit, Francisco Lindor. The shortstop takes the ball. Pruitt measures five feet ten inches. One hundred and eighty-five pounds, and he was a ninth-round draft pick back in two thousand and thirteen. On the ground, right side. Simeon toss over to first. Lindor retired. The first baseman. Oh, one go. Two outs, bases empty. Pete Alonso up now for the Mets. He's already homered here in this one. A swing and a miss, and that's strike one. Some activity in the bullpen for Texas. Jake Latz appears to be getting ready for Bruce Bochy. Robertson, a right-hander, loosening up as well. Kicks and deals. Swing and a ball lifted in the air. Shallow left field. Carter brings it in. And that is that. But the biggest swing of the inning comes right here. A three-run homer. Last chance coming up here for the Rangers. It's the top of the ninth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, Edwin Diaz. And he'll feature a hard slider to work off his fastball. So digging in, Leody Tavares. And here it comes. Up the middle, McNeil. Over to first. And they get the leadoff man in the ninth. Really nice job to get your first out of the ball game. So the batting order turns over at the play. Marcus Simeon, 0 for 3. A fly out, a ground out, and a strikeout. Fastball in for a strike, and it's 0 and 1. Right through there for a strike. The Mets leading by five here at the top of the ninth. Hammers that one deep left field and forget it. He sends it out of here. His second homer of this series, and they cut into the deficit. It's 5 1. That was blasted. Absolutely, no doubt off the bat. Looks like this guy was looking out over the plate, but he was ready to turn on the inside fastball. So direct to the pitch, absolutely blasted out of this ballpark. Base is empty one away. Here's the shortstop at the play. Corey Seager. Hey. That one finds the zone. That's strike one. 
Tired. And he pumps it a strike. Oh, One down, base is empty. 99 miles per hour to finish him off. Dominating strike out there on just three pitches, and that's what a good power pitcher can do to you. If he's hitting his spots, filling up the strike zone, sometimes he bats over before it really begins. Last chance now for the Rangers, and now Adolis Garcia. That's in there. Strike one. If he doesn't get a knock right here, that pitch he just took is going to eat at him for a while. You might not see another pitch like that from a top-level guy like this. They're down to their final strike. He finds himself in a tough situation early. Just going to try to simplify it. Take a knock the other way if you can. This could end it. Right through there. Got it. That's the ball game. Whether you're a season ticket holder or you just come to a couple of games a year, to see your team win at home, there's just something special about that. Good job by this team to get it done for the hometown fans. 5-1 is how it ends. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Shambi. We'll see you soon.